And welcome back. What we've got here today is continuing on with more variables. We've done integers, I believe. We've pretty much covered that to death. But the integral data type actually has a couple more. And one of the primitives that's available to us is this thing called a car or a character. A character is quite literally a single character in a stream. Basically, it's anything on a keyboard you can enter and a few other extra oddball things. If you want to, you can go to, go to your Google and look up ASCII table and you can see all the characters that are available to us to play with. But a character like a character letter is just done as simply as that. Now as we talked before, we need to be able to initialize our variables. Well to initialize a letter, my style is to give it a space. That way it, I know it's got something and I don't have to worry about what it is. But note when you do a character, you end up with a single quote. So think of it as one letter gets one quote. So therefore, that gives us the, 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 a mental mnemonic for remembering this thing. They are, of course, able to be printed. Although right now, there's not a whole lot to see if you try to print out a blank. So we'll just do it the shorthand texting way and say, OK. Now, if we do this, we get a single character. If you type it with the double quotes, it will not work. This is, a, this is a string literal as opposed to a character literal being assigned to it. And characters can only hold one character. Now, in discussing what a string literal is, we saw that with Hello World that we started off the, the whole set with. Well, the whole Hello World string literal consists of all these characters Plus, there's a hidden one. These are actually C strings. They're stored differently than the string class that we'll get to here in a second has. And at the very end is a null character. Effectively, that is what is, is stored at the end that says this thing is ended with, with, with a, an extra character to say this string is over and done with. So you can see if every string literal ends with this character plus whatever you type in, this really ends up being two characters and it won't work. So try it, watch it fail. So we'll just do a simple little K or K, K, and we'll print it out. Boop, and there's a K. So anytime you have a single character, this is what you do to get a character into a, 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 a letter or variable. Uh, things we'll use this for, things like middle initials, that kind of stuff when you're capturing things, or menu items. Choose A to continue, choose Q to quit, um, choose S for subtraction, choose M for multiplication. So if you're doing menus, you'll oftentimes have letters coming in as your, your key to do your checking on. And that is the letter side of things. Now, if we do want to store a string, we actually have to use strings. And that is the key word for string. But you'll notice as soon as we try to use it, it fails. It not, it's not going to let us do a string variable because this thing right here is not in the primitive character set or primitive data set. So to make a string, you actually need to tell it where to go find this thing. And it's part of the standard string library, standard library namespace, and that will allow it to actually function. You'll see in, in many cases that this doesn't seem to require anything special. However, there is a library called the string library. String for C++, string.h for C. This library gives you access to all of the functionality of a string. However, if you don't include it, it kind of gets copied in as part of IOStream's base set of things that it knows about. So you'll get access to the string, but you won't get access to all the functionality of a string. So we've declared now a string called name. Now, again, like everything else, we don't know what's inside this. This could, could be something, could be nothing. They, they, they have, in recent history, in the newer versions of C++, they have changed this. In the old days, we would have to initialize it like that, where the double quotes ends up being an, an empty string or nothing or a null in effect. So what this does is say, I've got it declared and initialized. But you'll notice as soon as I did that, the light bulb popped up. And if you hover over the light bulb or click on it, uh, it says split into declaration and assignment because it turns out that this thing is actually already initialized by the library class string. So this guy up here, when, it's, when we have access to strings, does this nullification automatically for us now. 
That's relatively new. So we can get away with just doing string name like this and it's safe. So if I actually wanted to make a name, I have Bob. So if I wanted to print out Bob, I can of course copy paste and print out the name. So now if I run this, I'll get K Bob. And that is how you play with names. You can put whatever you want inside this. You can put the full name if you wish. Bob Smythe. Yeah, because Smith is so pedantic. And there's Bob Smythe. And that gives you access to strings and all the stuff that you need to play with strings. So now we've covered a couple of the base sets of things to deal with. We've talked about integers, how to determine sizes of integers, how to determine sizes of, of, of real numbers using our limits files. We have talked about a base character here, which is a primitive data set, which is also an integral data type, mainly because these things are stored in 8-bit sizes. So you get 255 of them, actually 256 of them, that you have available to you. And you can, of course, if you want to play with this, you can change this from a just to show you that it really is an integral type, you can change this to a number and see what it gives you. And the number 45 translates to a character dash. You have bigger numbers that you can play with. Anything above 125 is considered, or 127 is considered the extended um, ASCII data set. And you'll also notice it's telling us here that it's implicitly converting this number to a character because we said it's a character. So if we run this again, you'll see that 210 is that funny little question mark. And this is because in, in the Mac world, we don't know what these extended characters are in our consoles. But if you run this on Windows, you will see a number or a character pop up. But once again, try not to do implicit conversion like this. If you need a specific character that's in the character keyboard, go ahead and put the character in. It'll make your life a whole lot easier in the long run. If you're trying to use a symbol in Windows, okay, go ahead and do the conversion. Or make a constant and, and convert it that way. And with that, you've now seen pretty much almost all of the integral data types, integers and their various sundry types, to the character, an introduction to what the strings are and how to declare them and then how to, how to assign them values. And of course, you can see they print like everybody else. Onward, we will continue on next with floating point numbers and what we can do with some of them.